Very good evening to everyone. Here we are again. This is your host, Kuya Carding. Of course, marami tayong matututunan. At mula sa mga testimony, gospel, music and life ng inyong lingkod. And of course, sa ating mga bisita. In the, our program, The Carding Shows. Narito po tayo sa napakaganda, napakasarap na restaurant, hotel, resort ng Koy Cafe dito sa Pansol, Calamba, Laguna. Dito sa napakagandang lugar na ito ay mai-enjoy niyo ang pagkain in a very affordable price. And of course, ay, uh, gusto ko na po, hindi ko na patatagalin, I want to introduce you to our very, very special guest. And uh, let's welcome, he is uh, my mentor, my father in faith, my uh, my best friend and everything. Alam nyo, marami akong natutuhan sa kanya. And without much ado, let's welcome Bishop Tony Mario Hai. And of course, how are you, Bishop Tony? Well, I'm fine. How are you doing? Yeah, so you're our guest for today. Well, I just want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to be a guest in this program, which is a very good program. And I can see that you all are doing a fantastic work trying to get the, the, the Filipino people involved in the gospel music. So thank you so much. Yes. And uh, Bishop Tony, well, uh, you are not uh, new in this uh, program. And I know you have a lot of uh, TV program all over the world. And uh, but uh, what uh, I want to ask you is, uh, how is life going? Your journey in life, and uh, how is life in this pandemic time? Well, I can say that life is still the same because um, the Bible didn't tell us that life's going to be easy, and we know that. At every stage in life, you've always, you've always, we've always had to go through the ups and downs, and um, it's one of the human nature. And uh, the, but there's no way in the Bible that tells us that the, the, the journey is just going to be so smooth. But actually, what the Bible tells me that um, uh, weeping may endure through the night, but joy comes in the morning. So one thing, like Paul, I've I've, I've told myself is I've learned to abase and to abound. Um, there are challenges. These, these are trying times, but I know that after darkness comes a glorious light, and I know in my spirit that um, life is going to be better again, and we're going to go back to normal. And Bishop Tony, you have been here for a long time, and we are we are together for a long time. And uh, I want to ask you about your personal life, your marriage, and what uh, make you uh, plan to come here to the Philippines, and what's your ministry? Okay, thank you so much. That was a very interesting question. Yeah. Um, it takes, that question practically takes over the existence of my destiny. And so by answering that question, um, it's not separated from my marriage, my purpose, and my ministry. Uh, I'm married to a Filipino, um, she's the niece of the late Supreme Court Court um, Justice Seraphine Cuevas, and we have uh, three and um, we have two beautiful daughters, and some adopted Filipino sons and daughters. Uh, I've been here since 2000 and 
five. But actually, I came to the Philippines in 2004. And briefly, when I got married, this was where I got married. I got married in, in Lucena. And uh, I didn't know I was going to come back. And somehow, be proud to the time I came to the Republic of the Philippines, I, I had a ministry in Brunei and some parts of Asia. And so God told me that I needed to start a ministry here. And initially, I, I, didn't, I felt that that was a burden because um, the Pentecostal churches or the born-again churches here in the Philippines, I felt that they were kind of slow. And um, I knew that to do a ministry, um, I needed the grace of God. But to God be the glory, we started the ministry by setting up the Shine program. Yeah. And you remember that Shine, Shine Philippines. Shine Philippines. Yes. And we had our first... We're still moving on. Yeah, we had our first crusade in, in, in Lucena. And that was in 2005. And uh, over 5,000 souls were set free. And after that, we started going to different parts of the Philippines. And a lot of people told us that, why don't you just, um, this is the ark, why don't you just set up the church? So we set up our first, our first um, church, what I call a city church, in at Tim Camon in Quezon City. And from Tim Camon in, the church spread to different parts of the Philippines. And uh, to God be the glory, today we have thousands of members in the Philippines. We've been able to build, we were the first people to build the, the, the we, we built the first Christian, born again Christian cathedral in um, Quezon province and in the entire Philippines. Then from then we, we moved on to, we expanded, we went to Alabang, while the church moved from Visayas, Luzon, and Mindanao. Yeah. And um, recently, we just set up our headquarters church that cost us uh, multiple millions of dollars, uh, which has a lot of facilities. Presently, Tim has, team is represented in different parts of the world. We have team in Australia. We have team USA. We have Team Japan. We have Team Pakistan. Team Pakistan is about 100,000. They have about 100,000 yeah. people. And Team Kenya, Team um, in other parts of the world. And, and it's just an experience. As a shepherd, I think the journey has been smooth, but not without challenges. As a father, I'm enjoying my, my family life with my beautiful daughters, who are also writers, and they preach, and my wife. And as a, as a brown Filipino, I'm enjoying the hosp hospitality of the people here. And so that's, and above all, God has sent me here to make sure that souls are saved and transformed. And we've not held back carrying out the apostolic function which you've been part of. Bishop Tony, a lot of people are shying away uh, for taking the fat you are doing. So it's not easy and uh, it's challenging. So for a foreigner to be in other, not only in the Philippines, on the entire world, you are going around everywhere. And uh, what is the challenges that you experience? I've always said that when a man chooses a way to follow, he's chosen a way to die. And um, I've, al I've also, al also said that unless you live for a cause much more bigger than self, you've not lived at all, you've merely existed. Um, when you understand your purpose, when you understand that the things that God has called you to do, uh, there's an inspiration that comes without understanding, knowing that you are not just a gift to your family, you're not just a gift to your community, you're a gift to the entire world. 
And there is a proverb in my place that says, if I belittle you, I belittle myself. And if I honor you, I honor myself. And what's the golden rule? And Jesus said, uh, do unto others what you'd want others to do unto you. Now, the entire world is in a mess. You go to the news media, there's one story or the other, and people dying. Nations are in distress, and people are going through crisis. As reflected in the book of Isaiah, the Spirit of God is still saying, Whom shall I send? Who do I send to the nations of the world to tell them that the gospel is the good news? You know, I'm here because I know that there is something behind, be, besides the negative stories that we've heard, the hatred, uh, the fighting, the pandemic, there is a good news. And the good news is that Jesus died and he, he set us free. And he's giving us the power to be sons of God. The good news is we can be sick, but through by the stripes of Jesus, we've been made whole. That's the good news. The good news is we can be inconsequential and insignificant, but when we understand our purpose in Christ, we become whole. But unfortunately, many people have not understood this. That's why they're frustrated. My moon of blessed memory had this to say. He said, death is not the greatest tragedy. The greatest tragedy in life is a life lived without purpose. So I feel excited and happy to tell people that you don't need to kill yourself. You don't need to hold on to yourself, your small self-esteem. There's something that God has ordained you to do. And that's why you need to tell yourself, who am I? Why am I here? Who created me? And when I leave this place, where, 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 where am I going? What am I supposed to do here? What are my dominant gifts? And because I have been so busy and trying to take the gospel to different parts of the world, I do not see the challenges as challenges. Um, the challenges are there. Sometimes people don't want to believe. But I look at the greater picture. I see lives being transformed. I see nations being set free. I see the leadership of nations changing. And I believe that if all believers can stand and carry out the great commission as reflected in Matthew 28, um, the world's going to be a better place. The entire gospel is summed up into two words, hear and obey. But how can they hear if there are no preachers? By the way, uh, Bishop Tony, uh, as I have told you before, and I'm always telling you, you are so committed and you are so serious. <laughs> I say, well, we are not young anymore and uh, we can do the ministry and enjoy life. But the way I saw your ministry, I'm following you all the way. You are really so serious. Uh, as if it's, it's not really easy to be in your shoes. So can you say something about your enjoyment? Are you enjoying what you are doing? Yeah, but what people don't know is that I like watching good movies. <laughs> <laughs> and wow. my PA can tell you that See? I enjoy movies. And there was this time I went to Mindoro and I got myself a jet ski. And I felt I was like a, a kind of Rambo doing all the stuff and riding the jet ski. I love to ride. I love to swim. Even driving, racing. And I, I drive, <laughs> I, I do car racing. And sometimes I like to do creative contents like drawing, and um, create, try to create movies. So you and still rest. have time for yourself. Yes, there was this girl that came to for counseling, and by the time we finished counseling, I just went straight to the TV, and she was wondering. I thought he never watched TV. I said, "Excuse me, I'm still human. I only stop watching TV and movies 
when I'm dead. But thank God I'm not dead. And um, I love to travel. I love to take pictures. I love to see nature. I love uh, to climb uh, mountains and all manner of things to see God's creation. And so I, I take such time to, to, to express gratitude to God's creation. But the truth is, um, I ought to do more of it, but I've not had enough time. But you see, time is something that you just have to create for yourself. And so I do some of those things. And of course, someone was asking my wife, does he eat? I said, yeah, I eat. <laughs> One more question. Uh, this is uh, somewhat, uh, can I say personal? Because some, sometime when we go around uh, some other places, some, you sometimes hear people saying, Bishop Tony is a serious man. He is not connecting uh, with uh, with people, he's uh, very serious. He's very conservative. I told <laughs> them, well, no. If you know him, he is a jo He's also he will enjoy fellowshipping with people. Can you tell, elaborate that to the people watching so that they will understand who is Bishop Tony? Well, I'm a man who who who, who loves to laugh. Um, when I was a child, I used to be makulit. <laughs> yeah, I used to be. You speak Tagalog. County uh? land. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do uh, some of those uh, mischievous things, and sometimes I still see myself doing those things. You know, um, it's just that the place I live is not easy for people to come in. It's a very restricted place, and so that's why many people don't have that fellowship with me. But the few who those who are who have such fellowship with me, they'll tell you that um, I love to laugh. I love to tease people. Uh, I love to tell stories sometimes, and stories that make people laugh. And um, I also enjoy uh, having the fellowship with people. Yes. How about love? I want to ask more about love because. Sometimes they, they miscon uh, what do you call that misconception or misunderstood as if they, they thought you are very uh, introvert man. They, they don't understand that you are a very loving man. Uh. And I want you to say it by your own word, by your true self that, uh, so that all of them will know. And by the way, uh, our guest for today, Bishop Tony, he's, a, he's an apostle, he's a gatherer, he's gathering people all over the world, and he's a prophet. So if you want anything, <laughs> you want to know the, your future and love and, and life, you need to see Bishop Tony. So can you tell the, our, guest, our people, our audience about uh, your love about people and about uh, others. Uh, you, you can't really be a successful pastor or um, work in the apostolic and prophetic ministry, especially in the healing ministry, if you don't love. Um, John 3.16 sums it all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And so that's the unfinished, that's the, the assignment that Jesus wants us to have. You cannot lead. I was asking, I was telling some people, I said, why do you think, though I'm a foreigner, thousands of Filipinos, trust me, they follow what I do. By they the don't, way. They don't uh, follow me because of the miracles yes. and signs. They follow me because I have a loving relationship with them. By the way, them. Bishop Tony is... If you want somebody to love Filipino, it's the number one candidate or I will choose Bishop Tony. He loves Filipino so much. You cannot say bad things about Filipino. He will fight you. I'm telling you. And so continues, Bishop Tony. So the mistake some pastors do is they're trying to correct. The, people know that I enforce discipline. But you cannot enforce discipline without love. The, the main primary, the, the primary assignment of discipline is not to break people, but to heal them. 
to help them. Yeah. And so you can't do that without loving them. And love is not, yeah, sometimes you can say it, but love to me is an action. When you look at people, what do you see? Do you love them the way God loves them? Why do you correct them? Do you want to correct them to break them? But if they know that you care for them, and if they know that you want them to prosper, and if they know that you can take that meat, you know, midnight call, you're always there when they're in crisis, you're always there to pray for them. You're always there to, to comfort them. You don't need to tell them I love you before they know that you love them. And so that's my definition of love. In as much as I don't say it all the time, I do it all the time. And of course, uh, for for all your information, I'm uh, Bishop Tony is my mentor, my father in faith. People cannot understand how can a businessman like me following Bishop Tony? Uh, they thought he's a very hard, hard, uh, hard man. He's a very strict man. He's a very serious man. And now at this time, you know, the, w one of the most popular uh, 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 about good news today is grace. Do you know that? Well, we are all saved by grace. And sometimes they are thinking, maybe Bishop Tony is not that the man of grace because he's very serious. But I'm telling you, you, you just met a prophet. That's why it's like that. And he's so serious and committed in his ministry. And me, I am very extrovert. I'm a very happy man. And I want to connect with people. That's why we are connected. And to tell you the truth, and Bishop Tony will tell you by his own word about grace. You know, since the beginning of time, even I don't, I know I'm saved by grace, but I don't talk about it. But since we we met for maybe 12 years already, Bishop Tony is uh, full of grace. The way he- Almost 16. He, 16 years already, 16. oh my God. Imagine that, for 16 years we're together, I saw his life, I saw how he deal with people. He's full of grace, very graceful, very loving. He will not, he will not fight anyone. Even you try to insult him, he will still be calm. The fruit of the spirit is with him. You, you can try it. Don't, you know, in grace, in, you know, in the ministry of grace, we don't judge people by their look. We connect. We, 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 we try our best to be intimate with the, the man so that you will understand that, oh, I love this man. What can you say about this grace? For 16 years, you're doing that to us. Okay. Without saying the word. I've said any gospel of grace that's preached without the deity of Christ is a gospel of disgrace. Um, but the entire gospel is all about God's grace. Yes. We are not saved by our own personal righteousness. We're not saved by our own personal holiness. Because the Bible tells us that if God were to count iniquity, no one, not you, Nobody, no one. Not me. No one can stand before God. And the Bible makes it clear that the righteousness of man is like filthy rags before God. Yes. And that's why the Bible tells me in the book of First John, you mm. read chapter 1 downward. It said, my little children, this is the gospel I've preached to you that you do not sin. But... If anyone sins, he has an advocate who speaks to him. And now let me tell you something. It's, it's only in God's judicial system that someone who has committed a crime that deserves death is set free. And when God sets you free, he justifies you. Amen. And he sanctifies you. Yes. And he glorifies you. Yes. In God's judicial system, the sinner is justified by the blood of Jesus. Yes. 
justified by the finished work of Christ, then the sinner is sanctified. Sanctification simply means your, your record has been wiped clean. Then it doesn't end there. He glorifies you. That means the glory that he's sharing, he wants you to share of that glory. Now, this one is going to sound a bit controversial, but it's not. When the, the problem with Christians, <coughs> we are mm. so sin conscious. The law reminds you of the things you've not done right. But grace reminds you of who you are in Christ. Amen. We are so sin conscious that when we fall into sin, when we do things that are not right, we begin to condemn ourselves. But the Bible tells you that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And so Christians say, we've done something wrong. And God, I'm sorry. When you go to God in prayer that you've done something wrong, how do you stand before God? Do you wait for God to forgive you? You're still waiting for him? We don't wait for God to forgive us because he has said, if you commit sin, all you need to do is to acknowledge it and it is gone. Mm. That's why in the Bible, the Bible tells me in the book of Hebrews, therefore let us go into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. He didn't say that we may wait for God to forgive us. You've been forgiven. So all you need to do is to claim it. And thank God for the forgiveness. Yes. That's the difference between yes. believers and unbelievers. Believers, when we do things wrong, the judgment is not condemnation. We are not even bound to be judged. All we need to do is to tell God we are sorry. And we go to obtain the forgiveness that God has given to us. That's why the prodigal son he didn't wait for someone to tell him that your daddy doesn't want to see you. He knows his daddy. He knows that if he can take the first step, the right step towards the father, there is nothing that the father, he has done against the father that the father will not forgive him for. The Bible tells us what can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. And so as believers, instead of living in the realm of condemnation, we should live in the realm of sonship. That is what grace is all about. It, it gives us the, 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 the right to live as sons of God. I remember uh, for our 16 years uh, together, the first three years is hard for me because I cannot understand your, your attitude and character and your life because uh, so many people are saying bad things about us. They are condemning us. They are saying all kinds of things that I cannot uh, take it. But when it comes to you, uh, those times, if, if I will be, because that time I, I don't uh, really uh, understand, I'm not that matured in my Christian walk. All the bad people, even including a minister and uh, our members, some of them, they are so stubborn, <laughs> and you still love them. You still don't want to fire them. I said, well, Bishop, what you are doing, you will destroy our ministry. These people are doing bad things to us, and you still love them. You still care for them. You still uh, give them a promotion. So that, that time, I begin to learn more about God, about the good news, about grace. And now I think... At my age, I'm already a senior. And in my spirit life, under your mentorship of a prophet, well, I think I'm matured enough now now to understand that everything that makes your ministry successful is the grace of God. What can you say more about it and uh, the, the success story of you are now enjoying? Um, what is your next plan for, for your ministry that God has uh, appointed you or chose you to do 